Happy Thursday, everybody. Happy Thursday. Okay, we're going to do a little uh, Bible study. We're going to get in, in a little early today for sake of schedule. And I'm going to be partnering with someone on this particular lecture. So let me try to get them invited. See if I can figure this out. Waiting. Let me. <clears throat> I gotta wait for her to jump on, and I'm gonna wait for some of you to get on. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I gotta be close to the camera for those of you who know I am legally blind, so this is the best I can do, okay? Hello. Hello. Wait, 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 wait. Hello. Yeah, yeah, did you join yet? Come. <clears throat> You're in? Yeah. All right, so let me add her. All right, here we are. How you doing? I'm doing well. Good. So I'm going to introduce myself for those, for your viewers who don't know me and didn't watch the last video on John 4. My name is Van Johnson. <clears throat> and I'll be doing today's lesson on repentance, how to repent, how to accept correction. And if you were to go ahead and introduce yourself so my viewers know who you are. Hi, I am Rashana Ferguson. Um, that's who I am. Um, so we're going to do this one early because we got some complaints last time that we posted it so late, even though we posted it a day early, <laughs> I got to stop shooting the messenger. We're worried about other things that we shouldn't be worried about. So today's preface, I'm going to preface today's lesson, which is how to repent Accepting correction. And I'm gonna open with a please you're reading for me, right? You got your mm -hmm. um where are we starting? Ecclesiastes one and nine. Oh, you know I can't even fail. Hold on, I can like Ecclesiastes, not not Sirach, Ecclesiastes, not Ecclesiastes. All right. I got you. Give me one more second. So Ecclesiastes one and nine, the thing that thou has yes, been, the thing that thou has been is, is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done, and there is no new thing under the sun. So uh, you'll hear me talk about this a lot, and I brought this out in last lesson, so I wanted to bring the scripture out. There's nothing new under the sun, people. A lot of the things that we was doing in the past, we're still doing today in the present world. 
Um, that's why the scriptures remain profitable to us, as the scripture says, in present day, in the present world. We can still learn from them. A lot of times, make excuses. And, There's nothing uh, you want to try. Go ahead, keep on. We make excuses and we say things like, oh, that's the Old Testament. That was an ancient time. That was back then. All scriptures are profitable in today's world. So that was the preface, and that's what we're going to get into, okay? Um, keep reading that. Well, wait, no, actually don't. Um, so now from there, I want us to jump to Sirach 20, chapter 20, 1 through 3. Why she's getting that, a lot of you uh, may be looking in your Bibles, and I did this last time, I'm, I'm not thinking, so I'm going to think ahead. Some of you are going to wonder, what the heck is Sirach? That's coming out of the Apocrypha, okay? Um, the reason it's not in your Bible is because the, the, the Apocrypha was removed from a lot modern translations of the Bible and versions of the Bible. That started in 1885. But from 1611 to 1885, for all of those hundreds of years, it was the Old Testament, the Apocrypha, and the New Testament. The Roman Catholic Church took well, it out after slavery, because now we're able to read and they didn't want us to know the truth. All of the truth. Their job is to keep us oppressed, to keep us in darkness, to keep us lost. That is what their job is. Make no mistake, people. You got it? Mr. Johnson, what, uh, what uh, chapter and verse? I'm sorry, don't be calling me it. Mr. Johnson. You made me sound like my daddy. Um, <laughs> his uh, uh, Sirach, wait a minute, I'm sorry, I, I got distracted, running my mouth. Sirach, one and, oh, no, 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 Sirach, uh, wait a minute, 20 and 1 through 3. There is a there is a reproof that is not comely again. Some man holdeth his tongue, and he is wise. Still reading. Um, it is much better to reprove than to be angry secretly. And he that confesses his fault shall be preserved from hurt. How good is it when thou art reproved to show repentance? For so shall thou escape willful sin. That was one to three. So that, that, that's our preference. This is what we're getting into. Um, and this particular verse is talking about a lot of times we're angry at people. And this goes into, what is it, uh, Matthews 18 and 15, I believe. Um, you had a problem with your brother. Go to your brother. Go to those people. Address what's bothering you one-on-one -on -one with that person. This is a commandment, people. This is how we're supposed to communicate to each other. Come, okay. and a lot of times we don't do this. We, you know, I'm gonna pray for him silently and all of that kind of nonsense. That's not what the scripture is telling us to do, because you want to fester that anger. So it's telling you to address it. It's better to offer your correction. Reproof means correction. It's better to get into that, um, with whoever, whatever situation. <clears throat> And so we can address that and fix the problem. Uh, we buy, in today's world, we buy into philosophies of men and uh, the positivity and be positive. Don't deal with the negative. You can't have up without down. You can't have a left without a right. You can't have positive without negative. You got to deal with them both. <clears throat> in order to get to the positive, a lot of times you have to go through the negative. You have to do that. So here, in Sirach, is warning you. 
it's saying that um, there is a reproach that isn't comely. He ain't gonna like it. Comely. It's not pretty. It's, it's gonna be ugly. That doesn't mean it's not good for you. Think about medicine. You, we take medicine all the time and it tastes nasty, but it's good for you. Same thing with the correction. It's not always going to be coming. It's not going to be always something you like and that makes you feel good. Sometimes you have to accept that correction. It's a double-edged sword. It's going to cut you deep. Come in, going in and coming out, it's going to cut you both ways. We have to learn to accept that as a people. <clears throat> okay? Uh, moving on. So the discussion, we're going to, um, <clears throat> repentance is a process, people. A lot of times we say words, but we don't understand what they mean. Repentance is a process. There are things that we must do along this process. Everything must be done in order. So there's an order to this repentance process that we, we, we have to follow. So let's get the first one. Let's start with the first one. I mean, well, too often we uh we want to blame, we want to place blame externally. You know, uh, we got a problem. The first thing we do is we always look outside of ourselves. We want to point the finger. My grandmother always said, when you point the finger, you got three pointing back at you. We don't think like that. We always want to blame somebody else or something else for the reason something happened. Also, we don't take responsibility for what we must do. So we always want to pray about it. And we want somebody to come do it for us. Or if the magically happen, somebody going to come save us. <clears throat> we, we waiting for something that we don't do. We don't do what we're supposed to do. We don't we don't take our steps. That's that's why the uh, the scriptures say keep the commandments, meaning do. You have to do something. It's an action. It's not a feeling or an emotion. It's an action. Um so the first thing we need to do. We're commanded to examine ourselves. Before we, we, we always like to examine everybody else and let me tell you something and all of that snapbacks and all of that nonsense. We don't check ourselves. We don't examine ourselves. So let's get that, right? That's Second Corinthians 13 and 5. See, I, I got to prove all things. That's what prove all things. So when I'm talking, lady, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go precept upon precept with you. I'm going to prove all things. You ain't going to hear a lot of my words. You're going to hear it coming straight out of the, the, the word that's in the book. These book of laws. You ready? Huh? Second Corinthians chapter 13 verse 5. Examine yourself whether you be in the faith Prove your own self. Know ye not your own self. How that Jesus Christ is in you, except you be reprobate. Should I continue reading? No, let's stop there. Let, let's explain this a little bit. Let's let's uh, let's go to Google, and let's get the definition of reprobate. And it should, if you go to Merriam-Webster's, it should be the first one at the top. The adjective, not the verb. All right. Morally corrupt, uh, foreordained to damnation. Uh, wait a bit. I want the one that starts An with um, of depraved person. I, 
believe so. Hold on. Um, I made a note. Unprincipled. Yeah, that's the one I want. An unprincipled or depraved person, a scoundrel or a rogue? An unprincipled or depraved person. Listen to what the dictionary, what God is saying to us. He's saying Christ is in you if, unless you are unprincipled. We're not following the oracles, his principles, the, the commandments, the, the judgments. Those are the principles that he's talking about. So Christ is going to be in you if, if you're doing those things. But if you're not, you're going to be a reprobate is, is what he's saying here. So let's go back to the, to the, uh, the beginning of that verse, 2 Corinthians. Let's bring that again. 2 Corinthians, the ninth chapter, fifth verse, examine yourself whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own self. Know ye not your own self, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be retrogrades. So the scripture is telling us to examine yourselves in the faith, whether you are walking in truth, walking in the laws, examine yourself. Let's do this first before we start looking at other people. <clears throat> Here's another thing. Sometimes we get a holier than thou attitude about ourselves or we get churchy with people because we're, it's kind of like watching a movie, right? We've all had a movie that we watched that was a good movie, and then you get a friend who discovers the movie way later on, or a TV show. Hey, man, I, I had somebody recently, hey, man, you ever see that TV show, The Wire? Man, that TV show is outstanding, and they are excited, like, but they just ex seeing it. I'm, like, thinking to myself, 10, 20 years ago, how long that was? Great, but it doesn't change the fact that it was a great show, no matter when they discovered it. The truth is the same way. This word is the same way. Everybody is not going to be at the same place at the same time. So sometimes those of us who may be aged in the truth, and age is not a, is not a physical age, it's a mental age, it's a spiritual age, we may be a little bit further along than somebody else, but we have a prejudice towards the people that don't know what we know. And we speak to them a certain kind of way, like, oh, you should already know this, but because I, I know it. But everybody comes to understanding at different times. We all have trials and tribulations that we're going through. And we can't condemn someone for going through their trial and tribulations at their time. That is their time to go through it. The purpose of our communication with that person should be to edify them. We should be praying for them. We should be edifying them. We should be, that's loving them. Love is an emotion. It's an action. But sometimes we, 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 we get a little churchy on them. You know, we get a little righteous, you know, but not in the, the, the true sense. <laughs> um... So we need to examine ourselves and check ourselves to make sure we're not doing that thing. To make sure we are in the hate, to make sure we are in the correct faith. And make sure we are behaving appropriately. That that that's that's the principle. That's one of the underlying principles of the gospel. That's what we should be doing, and we need to do this on a daily basis. And then, and then God goes on further to say, don't you know yourself? Do you not know yourself? You, you too busy trying to know everybody and read minds and all of that. Do you not know yourself? <clears throat> is what God is asking us here. Examine yourself. Do you not know yourself? And 
then he goes on to explain what he means by that. Don't you know Jesus is in you? He is in you. You should be behaving a certain way. You should be in the faith. Is what this, this, we need to check ourselves, people. <clears throat> uh, let's go on to the second one. Any any questions thus far? No, we good. Nobody tagged. Nobody's watching. Um, you have a few people watching. Just no questions yet. Oh, okay. So secondly, confess our faults one to another. We have a problem with this, and I'm saying we because we all guilty of this at some point. We, we got to learn to confess to each other, but we have a problem with saying, my bad, I'm wrong. When we say it sarcastically, oh, you right, you right, you right. Because you're wrong doesn't mean I'm right. Be wrong by yourself. Examine yourself. You ain't got to always go, you right, you right. It ain't about that. It's about you being wrong and fixing it and making the appropriate correction. Let's get that. Let's get that. Uh, 2 Corinthians 13 and... No, no, no. We were there already. I'm sorry. James. We're going to come out of James 5 and 16. I can't see. Please forgive me, y'all. Please forgive me. I'm crazy right now. I apologize. Let me let me pause. James five. Let, let me let, hold hold where you at and get a uh, okay. Get buttery smooth for me. You know what I'm talking about? Mm, I do, but I don't know where. Hold on. Yeah, you know, find find that for me, please. I want to address something real quick. Mm -hmm. Everybody don't know me. I'm, I'm, I, you know, people on my page know me, but people on your page and in, in, in this in this group don't necessarily know me. So, and we do this. Uh, we make assumptions about people. We we want to shoot the messenger and focus on the message. And I, I'm, I don't have time to play games with you. We don't. We don't have time. We don't have time. That's what Christ told us. Make no it. haste. You got it? We don't have time. Mm -hmm. We don't have It is some no heat. So I'm, I'm not going to speak to you churchy. You ain't going to get that from me. You done been getting that all your life. You ain't getting that from me. Here, read that for me. Where we at? Psalms 55 and 21. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war, war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. See, we so used to that. We so used to people being smooth as butter. We like that. It makes us feel good and warm and fuzzy. Not going to get that with me. I'm just letting you know right now. I, I'm showing you love. I'm not getting paid for this. I'm doing this for free. I put a lot of work into this. I'm in the book every day. I'm reading my four chapters a day. I'm putting in this work. I don't have time to play games. Either you're going to get the message, you're going to hear his words, turn away from him. It's simple as that. The choice is yours. Choose life or choose death. That's the choice that we're all faced with. That's why I'm sharing you the world's greatest gift, which is the word of God. That's love. That's real love. It's an action that I'm doing. I'm not here to make you feel good and entertain you. Not going to do that. I'm sorry. I got off on a little tangent. Let's go back to James. James, the fifth chapter, the 16th verse. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayers of a righteous man avail of much. So we're doing this. We're confessing our faults one to another. 
so that we can do what? So that we may be healed. We not benefit. We're doing it for our own salvation so that we may be healed. Read that again, please. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that she may be healed. The effectual fervent prayers of a righteous man avail of much. It's a lot in that. It's a lot in that. Confess our faults one to another. It's a lot in that. That's part of our own spiritual growth. All of that, you right, you right, you right. It ain't about me, it's about you. Admit you're wrong so you can heal yourself. It's, it's, it's a thing that we have to, and I'm guilty of it. Sometimes I got to catch myself. We all struggle with sin daily. And sometimes you got to catch yourself. You got to touch them fringes. And remember, oh, remember this. I got I to gotta confess my faults. I got to heal myself. Because we ain't on this walk with nobody else. We all walk in ourselves. We all got to stand in Christ by ourselves. We can't save other people in the end. And everybody's not going to be saved. Only one third of us is going to be saved. That means most of the people you talk to, they're not going to get what you're saying. You're going to lose people on this walk. I'm sorry. That's what Christ told us. But we said we believe the Bible until the scriptures start coming out. So it's either do you believe or don't you believe. It's no in between. There's no sitting on the fence, people. Either you believe every word of these scriptures or you don't believe nothing. Period. That's it. That's your choice. Life and death. Let's get that real quick. I'm going off on a tangent again. Um, it's in Matthews. Um, I didn't come to uh, I didn't come to bring peace. I came to bring division, is what Christ said. I'm sorry, I didn't take all as extensive notes as I did on the last one because I wanted this to be a little shorter video. I got you. It is Matthew 10 and 34. Read. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. No, no, not that one. The one that where I came to bring division. Okay, give me a second. That's a precept, but I want the other one specifically. It might be in five. I'm, I'm not sure exactly where. I can find it. I'm sorry. Um, it's actually Luke, sweetie. Luke, it might be Luke uh, 12 and 51. I think it's a Luke. I'm sorry. I said Matthew. Huh? 12 and 51, Luke right? Yeah. And My bad. No problem. Uh, suppose ye that I am come to give peace on earth. I tell you nay, but rather division. Read. I'll read it again. Suppose no, no, no. That I am come to get... Go to the next verse. Okay. Please. No problem. For, for from henceforth there shall be five and one house divided, three against two and two against three. Still reading? Yes, ma'am. The father shall be divided against the son, and the son against the father, the mother against the daughter, and the daughter against the mother, the mother-in-law against the daughter-in-law, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Exactly. That was good. So Christ is telling us, I didn't come to bring peace, bring division, because everybody's not going to get this word. I'm going to separate fathers from sons, mothers from daughters, mother-in-laws from daughter-in-laws. You will lose people in this truth. It's, it's accepted. It's going to happen because Christ said it was going to happen. 
it's just but sometimes too often we 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 carry we we holding on to the lust of the world that includes our friends, our family, our associates. And we don't want to tell them the truth because we don't want to uh lose them. But these people, some of these people ain't ready to hear the truth. Some of these people got devilish spirits on them. They got STDs, spiritually transmitted demons, right? And they hurting you. They bringing you down because you associating with them. You won't divide yourself from them. The scriptures say, be ye separate. That's not just the other nations. Sometimes you have to separate yourselves from your own people in this faith. <clears throat> but we so quick to hold on to the world, to the, to the lust of the world, to our associations. And we don't want to do what Christ told us to do. Because we don't want to offend but be smooth to people. We want to be smooth as butter and oil, soft as oil to people. We don't want to cry out loud and spare not. We don't want to do that. Right? Mm. Still no questions? Mm -mm, I'm looking. Okay. And I'm going to tell y'all, we got to start talking, man. We got to have a conversation. This is a dialogue, not a monologue. Okay? This is a conversation. This is how learning takes place. This is how you get understanding, asking your questions, and engaging in conversation. Everything doesn't have to be an argument or a debate. I know that's the world we live in today. Well, even in yesterday, we was in that world. Remember in uh, John 4, the woman on the well, she was a little contentious with Christ. She, she had snapbacks too. Christ shut her down. But we, so we always had that spirit on us. We always been a hard-headed people. We wouldn't hearken. We've been stiff-necked. All of these adjectives that, that God uses to describe us. This has always been our spirit. Nothing is new under the sun. We got to let those things go. We got to talk. Again, confess, out, confess your faults. And if I'm wrong, please, I don't know everything. Please, let's have that discussion. <clears throat> Just when you come at me, make sure you come in with scriptures, with some understanding. Let's not come with old wives' tales. Let's come with some understanding. Or we'll listen and learn in silence. Because sometimes we want to teach or we want it when we should be listening when we should be taught again ourselves, we want to do all of the teaching. Because we think we know, just like the woman on the well, Christ said to her, you think you know something you don't know. Because you've been, but you've been taught incorrectly. That's why I'm here. If we was doing things appropriately already, we would already be in the kingdom, right? Christ ain't came back last time I checked. He ain't been back yet. So that means we haven't woke up yet. And enough of us haven't woken up. We say we're woke, but we don't know what that means. It's a catchphrase. It's spin. We live in a world of spin. But if Christ had came back, it, it would already be a whole nother world. All right. So let's move on. How they say it in church, huh? I need a praying church, huh? But y'all won't pray with me. Y'all got to talk to me. This thing, you ain't sitting in church or Sunday school on Sunday, sitting there dozing off. You're gonna be engaged, me. I'm going to speak to you. 
we gonna talk. We gonna get to know each other. That's the iron sharpening the iron. That's the only way that happens. Through dialogue. But you gotta bethink yourself. I know y'all been used to doing it a certain way all your life. That's a learned behavior. Okay. Let's uh let's go on to the second one, right? Oh, we already did. So let's uh let's bring that out. James, did we already read James five and sixteen? We did. Do you want to read it again? Yeah. Confess your faults one to another. We have a problem with telling our we hate each other. That was beaten into us during captivity, during slavery. We've been in and out of slavery throughout history. Egypt, Babylon, Assyria, Rome. Throughout history, we've been in and out of slavery. Here in North America, in and out of slavery because we won't keep the laws of God and we hate each other. We quick. We, we, I seen people just pop off at another one, they brother, they sister. Just like Christ said, if you knew who I was, you wouldn't be talking to me like that. That was in John 4. Don't we all got Christ in us? And if you rep if you if you see your sister as having Christ in you and her, like it's in you, and if she sees Christ in you, sister, you wouldn't be speaking to black men the way you speak to them. Brother, you would not be speaking to black women the way you speak to the sisters. We got to correct ourselves. We looking for Biden to save us. We look for Obama to save us. We look for Clinton to save us before that. Right? We look for Martin Luther to save us, King. We look for Malcolm to save us, Marcus Garvey. Huey Newton, and all of these other people, the scriptures say to us, no man will redeem us. No man. Only Christ. How is he going to do that? We start keeping the commandments. Because Christ said, if you love me, you're going to keep these commandments. They're commandments for everything, how we are supposed to communicate with one another. How we do that. But we don't talk the laws of God. We want to feel warm and fuzzy. We want to feel buttery. We want that smooth talk. We want to sing and dance. We want to bang tambourines. That's what we want to do. We got to be separate. We can't act like these other people who enslaved us. We can't behave like they behave. We can't do that. Buttery smooth. I love that. It's one of my favorite scriptures, you know. Smooth as butter. I'm referring to my notes right now. I'm sorry. Okay. We struggle a lot as people with these first two principles. You know, we don't want to be unprincipled, but we are. We're rogues. We lost sheep. Because we haven't woken up yet. God tells us we are a destroyed people. Why are we a destroyed people? Because of lack of knowledge. Not for a lack of entertainment. Not for a lack of feelings. Emotions. Dancing and singing and entertainment. We are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. We spend so much time on everything else but God and doing what God wants us to do. So much time. Some of y'all heard me say four chapters a day and y'all cringed a little bit. That's nothing. Start out with one. Build yourself up. But turn the TV off. Like my cousin posted that the other day. Turn the TV off. And he said, he, he kind of misquoted it. He said, let God do his work. He was talking about the thunderstorms. 
Well, cuz, that's an old wives tale. Turn that TV off so you could do God's work. That's what you should have put. <laughs> Don't mean to call you out, but I love you, man. You know I love you. <clears throat> we got the renaissance Jesus in our mind. We got to get that Jesus out of our minds so we could bethink ourselves. We got to bethink ourselves so we can transform ourselves. But you, you, you can't fix a problem if you don't acknowledge the problem. Fix the problem. It's our thinking. It's how we speak to one another. Right? I'm going to come back to that. I'm going to park and lot that point. Um... We hate correction, I said, right? Let's get that. We got a bunch of scriptures on that. Let's go to Proverbs 15 and 10. Proverbs 15 and 10 reads, Correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the way, and he that hateth reproof shall die. Then I tell y'all the choice is life and death. There it goes right there. Prove all things. Read it again for him. For those in the back. Proverbs 15 and 10. Correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the way, and he that hateth reproof shall die. Correction is grievous. It's hard. It's hard. That's what grievous means. It's hard. Correction is hard. God knew his people, didn't he? He knew us. He made us. He knew us, even in today's world. In the beginning, he already knew the end. He knew what we was going to be like today, hard-headed. And he goes speaking to us, again, directly to us. Hold on, I got some more precepts on that topic. Wait a minute. Let's get up, uh, staying in the book of Proverbs 12 and 1. Proverbs 12 and 1 reads, Whosoever loveth instruction, loveth knowledge, but he that hath reproof is brutish. He that hateth reproof. Right? Read that again, please. Proverbs 12 and 1, Whoso loveth instruction, loveth knowledge, but he that hateth reproof is brutish. Remember what I said. Well, remember what God said. We are a destroyed people for lack of knowledge. So here it is again. Here's a precept for that. Here's the precept for that one. Let, let's get a, uh, what is that? Um, let's pull that up. Um, destroy for lack of knowledge. Let's get that. Welcome back. <laughs> Hosea 4 and 6. Yeah, that sounds right. Bring it out. Give me one second. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forget thy children. Hello. Read it again. Hosea 4 and 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because the they lack have... of knowledge. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. 
Now let's go back to Proverbs. What was it? Twelve and what? Twelve and one. Twelve and one, right? Mm-hmm. Let's go back. Let's connect these dots, y'all. Who Proverbs twelve and one, whoso loveth instruction loveth knowledge, but he that hateth reproof is brutish. See, listen to what he's saying here. We destroy for lack of knowledge. And he's saying, if you love knowledge, you're going to love instructions. You're going to seek it out. You're going to look for it. You're going to accept it when it comes to you. All right? But we have a problem with that. We don't like nobody to tell us nothing. Except the other nations. Now, when the other nations tell us something, we listen and we all is. We in behavior for them. But when we dealing with each other, our neighbor, right, our brothers, our sisters, we hate each other. We hate knowledge. We hate to confess ourselves, my bad. It's a simple thing. Hey, my bad. How hard is that? We're wrong every day. I know I am. How hard is it? Hey, my bad. Let me fix that. How, how hard is that? How, how much better as a people... Will we be if we did that thing? I didn't see fights break out at Walmart. Simple things. Because somebody can't just say, my bad. It's a simple thing. We're all in Walmart trying to get our goods, our groceries, and now, now a fight broke out. I mean, really? And it's not just the young people, because that's what the old people want to say. Oh, that's the young people. I done seen two old ladies fight in Walmart <laughs> over this. I, I Just not being able to say, hey, my bad, excuse me, pardon me, something simple. That's what this is going into. All right. Hold on. I keep leaves on my place. I'm sorry. No need okay. for apology. Okay. Uh-huh. No need. I didn't hear what you said. <laughs> I said you don't have to apologize. You good? No, nah, I had a, I had a tablet and my nephews destroyed it, and the tablet was much easier for me to read and see stuff. You know, it was like a ten inch screen. I, I need to get another one. Um, me not following my own advice when I tell people to buy electronics. What do I say? Body dog on extended warranty. Why didn't I do that? <laughs> Not not accepting my own correction. Hello. Y'all don't hear me. <laughs> Hello. Um, so next Proverbs. We still in Proverbs now. 9 and 8 through 11. Proverbs, but y'all don't know what Proverbs mean. Proverbs is a wise saying. That's why a lot, it's a lot of good stuff in Proverbs. Good stuff throughout the Bible, but Proverbs on this particular topic, uh, I found it very useful. Proverbs 9 and 8 through 11. Yes, ma'am. Reprove, reprove not a scorn, at least he hate thee. Rebuke a wise man, and he will love thee. Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be yet wiser. Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. For by me thy days shall be multiplied, and the years of thy life shall be increased. So let's go back to the beginning of that. Start over again at, uh, at eight. Eight. Reprove not a scroll, at least he hate thee. Rebuke a wise man, and he will love thee. So it's saying if you reprove a scorner, right? A scorner. Let's get the definition of what a scorner is. I want to be absolutely clear on this. Y'all see my auntie back there digging in that garden over there, making it work in her magic? She got a butt all in the camera, though. <laughs> it's cute. What? Whatever. <laughs> scorn. A scorn, scorn is open dislike or res disrespect or well, mockery. A scorner is particularly a scorner. And what came up for scorn? 
In the dictionary, scorn is going to come up, and it will be a person who does these things. Okay, let's get that part. Open dislike and disrespect or mockery often mixed with indignation. Ooh. Ooh. Y'all hear what God's saying here? A scorner, a person who's disrespectful. You see what I'm saying here? What was the other part of that? Disrespectful or what else? Mockery. They're going to mm -hmm. mock you. And the last part of that was indignation. Mm, let's get that. Let's get the um, click on that. Indignation. Indignation is anger aroused by something unjust, unworthy, or mean. And that's what they get angry, right? They get angry, and you you be talking to them. You talking to a person like this, you don't even understand why they angry. <laughs> but that all of those things, those adjectives, they all go together with this type of person, right? What was the second part of that after the scorner? A scorner, uh, they hate correction, right? Read that again, mm -hmm. nine or eight, nine and eight. Reprove not a scorner, at least he hate thee. Rebuke a wise man, and he will love thee. So hey, you got a person that's doing you like that? Don't even waste your time with them. That's what God is saying. They did, they're being disrespectful. They're mocking you. They're being angry. Stop talking to them. Right? Y'all had this situation happen when y'all had one of those tents out there at the, um, at the men's shelter, right? Mm -hmm. The brother was angry, wasn't he? Agreed. Remember you were telling me the story about the brother that, oh, the mm -hmm. white people bring us better stuff than y'all? He was angry, though. He's a scorner. That's where he is. Don't even waste time with him. Don't even waste time with him. But what was the second part of that? What came after that on the scripture? Rebuke a wise man and he will love thee. A wise man is going to love you. Because when you start talking to somebody, you start talking, they're going to hear God's words and they're gonna, that, that's going to person that's going to love you. They're a wise person. They, they listen to God's words. They're not mocking you. Mocking is, oh, he sound like this, or they do this, and they make it all, everything else that ain't got nothing to do with what they saying. That's a person mocking. They're hating you. That's the word we use in modern vernacular, hating you. Okay? Same thing. That's what God said. They, you know, that's what they're talking about. Those are angry people, outwardly and inly, and inwardly. <clears throat> and they don't want to correct themselves. It's, they're uh get get double minded for me. That's in James. Yeah, that's James uh four and three or something like that. It is James four and three. Hold on, let me go there. Oh, that boy that boy got some scripts in his head, don't he? Mm-hmm. Wait a minute. Yeah, I am. Um, actually, the better one is James 1 and 8. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Exactly. That was the one I was thinking of. Thank you. You read my mind? <laughs> Never. Uh-huh. Here you are. We all got blessings now and gifts. <laughs> that might be your gift. Um, double-minded. These people, that, that goes into this scorner. They're double-minded. They're wishy-washy. They say one thing, they do another. They're liars. They're unstable. 
these characteristics of these type of people. And we should be examining ourselves to make sure we are those things. Examine yourself. Brothers and sisters. Right? I got one more in Proverbs for you. Um, Proverbs 5 and 12 through 14. Proverbs 5, 12, and 13. 14. And say how? Huh? 14, I'm sorry. 5 and 12 through 14. Okay. And say, how have I hated instruction and my heart despises reproof? And have not obeyed the voice of my teachers, nor inclined my ear to them that they instructed me. I was almost in all and assembly. You want to know why we in captivity? Because we hated correction. We hated it. So we broke the laws. We wanted to do what the other nations was doing. Throughout history, we've been doing that. Hey, hold on one second. I need to get my charger. I didn't charge up this other phone like I thought I did. The one I'm we talking on. Give me one hey, second. Um, hey, let's make this a part one and a part two. I got to eat lunch. I'm hungry. Really? Yes, I'm I never ate breakfast. This meat right now. Huh? Ain't that, what, ain't that what you brought out in John 4? This meat? Yeah. Uh, you getting it right now? You a guy? Uh, listen to what I said. Like, I'm going to go eat lunch. You're not listening. I'm sorry, I'm back. I'm going to plug it in. I'm back. Huh? You get your charger? Yeah, yeah, I'm plugging it in there right now. I'm sorry. Ugh. Yeah, there we go. Now I can see you. I was talking. I heard you, but I couldn't see you. That's my not doing diligence. I should have prepared for that. My apologies. All right. So where were we? We were at, uh, we were still in Proverbs, right? Mm-hmm. Read that again for me. Five and 12, right? And say how have I hated instruction and my heart despised the reproof and have not obeyed the voice of my teachers nor inclined my ear to them that instructed me. I was almost so an evil in the middle of my right here. This is a prophet here confessing his faults. He said, I hated correction. I hated reproof. I you didn't talk listen low, to sweetie. counsel. I can't hear you. Uh huh? I can't you hear said, you. You started talking lower. Oh, I'm sorry. But this is a prophet saying here that I, I, I hated correction. I hated proof. I didn't listen to people offering me counsel. Because, again, then we come back with the mockery. We come back with excuses, right? We always want to make excuses. Somebody's trying to counsel us. But, 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 right? We, we do that. We can't just accept the counsel that somebody's given, right? Let's get that real quick. That's, um, what is that? Um, according, excuses according to his own will. You know what I'm talking about? I can barely hear you. I don't Did know you do why. Something different to the camera? No. You're way quieter. No, I haven't. Okay. Yeah, no, I haven't. I haven't done anything. All I did was plug the charger in. What scripture are you asking? Uh, according to um, um, according to his own will. Hold on a minute. I'll get it.
I mean, I'm speaking pretty loud. Okay. I guess we'll see after the video. It might be your phone. Maybe your speaker went down. Huh? Is it possible your speaker went down? I can didn't touch me? my phone, but we're good. I can hear no, you. No, I'm, I'm, I'm just asking you to check your volume to make sure your volume is turned all the way up. I said I didn't touch my phone at all. So I, I heard you. I'm asking you. Ain't that what, this what we're talking about on in the scripture right now? <laughs> I got to go. I got to go eat lunch. I'm going to uh, click out. Have a good day. So this is us not accepting correction. We we fulfill It's not problem. about correction. I have not eaten. You're not listening. Nor have I. I. That's a you thing. Have a good day. Okay. So I'll, I'll finish this on my own, uh, obviously. So the scripture I was looking for was excuses according to his own will. Um, let me uh, get that. Really. So I really hope that everybody can hear me. Um, I was trying to confirm that, but... Give me a second here. There we go. So this description I was thinking about is uh, Sirach 32 and 17. Uh, a sinful man will not be reproved. Okay but findeth an excuse according to his own will. That's what I was looking for. Um, we make excuses. We make excuses for things. Um, somebody's offering us counsel, particularly is when somebody's offering us correction, we want to make every excuse in the book on why we can't do this thing that we're supposed to be doing. But we have time, money for every other thing we want to do. Um, I really hope my voice, I, I don't want to talk much louder because I would be screaming and I don't want to look like a fool out here screaming in Scarborough. Um, so I hope I'm not doing that thing. Um, but I'll continue on. Y'all just had to bear with me because I lost my reader. And... So we, we, we turn away, we turn away from God's laws, we turn away from the truth that's God's laws, and, uh, and we want to believe in fables and old wives' tales and make excuses according to the things that we already wanted, what's in our mind. That's why the scriptures tell us, don't deceive yourself. Because whatever you think thinking should already be in these scriptures. That's where your, your mind should be on these scriptures. So if your thinking is somewhere outside of these scriptures, you've got a problem. you got a problem, all right? So um, <clears throat> sorry, I thought somebody was standing behind me. <laughs> the wind was blowing. Um so we going I'm gonna bring that out. We're gonna go to uh First Timothy. What is that? Four and seven. We're gonna start reading there. First Timothy four and seven, I believe, is where I wanna be. Um give me a second here. And y'all gotta bear with me, in case you don't know, I'm legally blind, so I'm I'm doing a lot of things on my phone so I can zoom in and zoom out. 
when I read from the Bible itself, it's a little bit slower for me. Um, and I want to do this for sake of time. Okay. But refuse profane and old wives' fables. Exercise thyself rather than rather unto godliness. Okay? Refuse that profanity, that anger, that mockery, those old wives' tales. You know, my mama said, or my mama did this, and they did this for 100 years and all that nonsense. Let's get that out of our minds and bethink ourselves. Okay? Let's, let's get that stuff out of our mind. Okay? Because a lot of that comes from captivity. When we were in, when we were in chattel slavery, we still in captivity, but we were in chattel slavery prior to 1885. Okay, a lot of those old wives' tales come from then. Okay, that comes from that thinking, the mind of a slave. Okay, when we couldn't read, we couldn't write. A lot of that comes from then. Get that out your mind, that renaissance Christ, that renaissance Jesus. It ain't nothing but Caesar Borgere. That's who that, that's who that image in your mind is, is Caesar Borgere. Okay? They, they, they created, they invented. See, the, you hear the Muslims say that and others who are non-believers in the Bible, oh, Christ was an invention. They're partially correct. The renaissance Christ was an invention. That was something that Esau, the Edomites, they created through syncretism. Look that word up, okay? This is what they do. That's how they wage war on us. Because they, the Edomites weren't given a heritage, okay? But their, their heritage, in the, in the sense of land, they weren't given a land. They, they were given the gift of war. So they don't just raise war with the sword. That's a metaphor. Propaganda is the sword. Okay? Psycholo psychology, psychological warfare. That's the sword. And we've been afflicted by all of those things over hundreds and hundreds of years throughout our history. They still affect us today. That's why we got those old wives' tales in our heads. Okay? Right? Propaganda is a very powerful weapon. And we say things like, only God can judge me. Right? We, we say those things when somebody's trying to offer us counsel. We say, only God can judge me. Don't judge me. We say stuff like that, right? That's what we say. Right? Is that true, though? Is that a true saying? No, it's not. That's a Tupac song. Stop saying that nonsense. Because here's what God said. Okay? We're going to get it. It's the, it's the opposite of that. Let's go uh, back to John. We've been in John a lot lately, right? So let's go back to John. John 7 and 24 is what we're going to go to. So do you guys want to read along with me? And I hope, I hope you are. I hope you're taking notes. Hope you're making your highlights. Okay. So let's get John 7 and 24, all right? Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment, right? So is God saying not to judge? Don't judge? Only God can judge me? No, he's telling us how we are, are supposed to be judging one another righteously, righteously, according to the laws, according to the commandments. That's what we should be applying to a person. Are they a scorner? You can visibly, in their appearance, are they mocking you? Are they openly debating you? Are they being um, uh, mockery and, and, and mischievous and angry and all those uh, adjectives that she brought out. You can uh, you can see that in their appearance. That's you judging their appearance. 
right? There's other things you can judge too. You, you, 70% of uh, communication is nonverbal. So you have to judge. You're making judgments every day. Judging is nothing wrong. Correction comes from that. Because the person correcting you is making a judgment about what you, what you do know and what you don't know. And they're offering you counsel based on their judgment, their righteous judgment. Okay? Uh, I'm going to try to skip over some stuff that I wanted to talk about because I don't, you know, it's, I'm going slower now that I'm reading on my own. Okay? So just bear with me, people. Bear with me. So let's get another one that goes along with that. That's Romans 8, 4 through 6, right? Let's go to Romans 8, starting at verse 4. Let's start. Let's go there, okay? And please, if you're leaving comments, I can't see them right now. I'll try. If you got questions, leave them in the comments. I'll try to come back to them or DM me or if you got my number, call me. Uh, I will try to go back and get them, but I cannot see them right now. Um, heck, I can't even see myself on this dog on camera, so please forgive me. Um, Romans 8 and 4 that the righteous of the law might be fulfilled right in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit okay right pay attention people it always comes back to the laws and commandments. Always. If you're walking in the law, that's your righteousness. Those of us who are doing that. Okay. Also, a precept for that, the opposite of that, would, a precept for the opposite of that would be um, don't sin in judgment of sinners. So if you got somebody that's sinning and you know they're outwardly sinning, they're willfully sinning, you can't let them sit, sit in counsel of them. That's that's a scornful person. You can't you can't sit in their judgment. But if you got a righteous person that's giving you counsel, that's where you should be seeking your counsel from. That's a different thing. But somebody who's a sinner, but examine yourself. You got to examine yourself. Make sure you seeking out. A godly man, sisters, as Sarah teaches us, right? Be continuously around a godly man, right? It says that. We all, we should be congregating with other godly people. We can't be congregating with sinners. People who are willfully sinning. They're not trying to keep the commandments. They willfully are making excuses according to their will, Right? Making sense, I hope. And I know I'm cutting some of y'all right now, and I don't care. <laughs> God don't care about your feelings either. He don't care about your feelings. Well, let's get the definition of feelings, right? Let's get that. What are, what are feelings? Go to Google. Type in feelings, definition, or meaning. Okay, pull it up. One of the definitions you're going to find, it's a belief, especially a vague or irrational one. That's your feelings. That's why they don't matter because they're vague and irrational. You could believe whatever you want to believe. You can make up in your mind all kind of beliefs. They're vague and irrational. That's what your feelings are. Okay. The only time your feelings matter is when you're talking about the other kind of feelings. When it's a physical reaction. When you go to the hospital and your body physically reacting to something. To pain, discomfort. They got the smiley faces up on the wall. How do you feel today, the nurse will ask you. Pick one of the smiley faces, one through ten. That's when feelings matter. Because they're trying to measure your physical reaction, your, your, your comfort. We're not talking, when y'all use feelings, 
you're, re you're actually replacing. Remember, I told you words mean something. You're replacing your your thoughts. Instead of saying I think, you say I feel. That's th those words are not synonymous. And you're talking about feelings as in a belief. It's not a thought. It's a belief. It's not based on nothing. It's irrational. It's vague. It's double-mindedness. You're unstable. Get out your feelings, black man. Get out your feelings, black woman. You got a job to do. Your feelings don't matter. I, if you watch my videos before, you've heard me say this. You go to court. We, I don't know. Uh, some A lot of us have been to court. You go to court. What happens in court? Don't nobody ask about your feelings because you're there to handle a, the business, the court's business. Okay? The bailiff will come out first and read you the rules. Here's how you're going to behave. You got to come to behavior. You got to examine yourself, put yourself in behavior. If not, you got a bunch of people with guns, a bunch of bailiffs with guns. It's going to make you behave. Trust me. They're going to explain the rules to you. And then the judge is going to come out. Come to order. Come to those rules. Follow these laws. How you going to behave here. And then the business is going to be conducted. Okay? Same thing when you go to school. No matter what grade you went, kindergarten to, to, to med school. Okay? First day of school, they're going to give you a syllabus. They're going to give you the rules, how, a code of conduct, how you're going to behave in the classroom. And then the teaching is going to start, right? So we follow this order everywhere else except with each other. We don't want to come to behavior with each other. We got to correct ourselves. We got to examine ourselves to make sure that we be in the faith, that we be in behavior, Okay. It's a simple thing, but it's so hard for a lot of us to do. We can't accept this correction. A lot of you right now, you, you can't accept this correction. You're going to find every excuse according to your own will why you ain't got time to hear this, to hear this lecture today. You're going to make every excuse in the world. <laughs> All right? That's what we do. We hate instruction. And the scriptures say, and we got to be, we got to examine ourselves to make sure we don't allow those, those, uh, those STDs to get on those, those spiritual transmitted demons to get on us. Because when the word come out, as the scriptures say, immediately Satan appears. Okay. Immediately the devil's going to come. Those spirits jump on us and they want to carry you away. They want to take you away from the word that's coming out immediately. I've seen it so many times. I've seen it so many times. Let me get that scripture, man, because some of y'all may not be believing me. Some of y'all may know exactly what I'm talking about. But I'm going to prove all things. Please bear with me. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, that's the one. Let me get this real quick. This is in Mark, y'all. Um, let me get this real quick. I didn't... Let me get this. I'm trying to see the best I can. I'm trying to see the best I can. Um... Okay, so this is Mark 5, 4 and 15. And thee are they by the wayside. But when they have heard, have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. You understand? Let me read it again because I kind of butchered that reading. I can't see. And they are, or and thee are they, by the wayside, where the word is sown. 
but when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. That's what I'm trying to do today, people. I'm trying to sow this word into your hearts, into your minds. That's what the Bible is talking about when it says hearts. It's not talking about your physical heart to punch blood. It's talking about your mind. I'm trying to sow this word in your brain in here. But when that starts to happen, Satan, Satan come immediately and take and steal you away, keep you from the word. You see the brothers out preaching on the streets all the time. They be preaching to somebody one-on-one, -on -one and all of a sudden somebody from the crowd come up and get in their ear and get their attention, take them away from the word. It happens all the time. Examine yourself so that thing doesn't happen. Or you can be conscious of it happening, right? Uh-huh. We getting this truth today, y'all. We getting some of this. Now, let me get back on track because I'm getting a little long-winded. I'm going to wrap this up soon. Uh, it was uh, feelings is what I was talking about. We always on our feelings. But remember what I said earlier. We was reading earlier, Sarat 20 and 1 through 3. This correction, this reproof, is not always going to be comely, meaning pretty. It's not always going to be pretty. So get out your minds. You, sometimes we shoot the messenger all the time. I don't like the way he look. I don't like the shirt he wearing. I don't like the way he said it. Like, 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 like. Get your feelings. Get out your dog on feelings. Get out of them because they're vague and irrational. Now, I told y'all, God don't care about your feelings. Matter of fact, I'm going to prove that right now. Let me prove that. Let me get that. Um, I wish I had a reader. 